All right, guys, this is Norval Central coming back at you another YouTube video. And this time of the recording, I have about 2,200 subscribers so far, so I really appreciate all the love and support so far on my YouTube channel. Just trying to get out as much daily consistent content as I can. Be sure to follow my Instagram and also my Twitter account. That is where I'm mostly at for the most part. Um, I have had a ton of videos recently about great news for Florida State in terms of commitments. Um, Florida State's been on fire recently in the month of July where they've had seven commits coming to the program, and it's been pretty much a great sign for Florida State in terms of recruiting. I even talked about Charles Lester, who I think could be a good potential um, sign and for an addition for Florida State in their 24 class. But here today, I have a little bit of an issue in terms of just making a video where it's not so positive for Florida State in this regard. And this is something that so many fans were talking about in the past where they were kind of expecting it. And let's just be honest. I mean, this was a situation where Florida State fans were kind of, uh, you know, in a, in a wrong headspace in terms of just where uh, everything was going in his recruitment. And that's T.J. Abrams, a four-star wide receiver commit from Dunbar High School in Fort Myers. And this is a situation where Florida was definitely involved, the, uh, you know, Art Tribal Florida Gators, as well as Texas A&M. And Florida, let's go ahead and just face it here, offered really late in the process, back in March uh, 7th of 2023. And they've kind of got these unofficial visits for Abrams the past couple of times. And next thing you know, um, he officially visits on June 16th. Also with A&M, he had an official visit there on June the 2nd. And then had that visit to Florida State on June the 23rd. And he kind of talked about how his recruitment wasn't really over. He still has a lot to think about, uh, you know, but he was solid in his commitment right now. It was just a lot of back and forth in terms of just what they mean to the program in terms of that. And Abrams committed back on January of 26 in 2023. And this was a situation where Florida State kind of had a lot of, you know, guys that were coming into the program because you look at it. I mean, Camden Fryer has been with the program for quite some time at this point. You know, and then you also have B.J. Gibson, who you added as a baseball player and a football player. Uh, Lorraine McCoy is another guy who they really, really like in this class. And I think that this can be a guy that they uh, can, you know, basically room into something. But we'll see where he goes if he does go to a UCF or if he stays at Florida State or whatever, whatever else goes on there or even a Miami, for example. Um, and then you also have Elijah Moore, who they absolutely love. Um, and I think this is a guy that, you know, that was a kid that they offered really, really early in the process, and they got him into the fold. Uh, big, tall, tall, talented receiver that isn't like most of their receivers they have so far. And I know with Abrams, you know, committing to your arch rival, uh, flipping from Florida State to Florida is never a good sign at that point. Um, but let's just face it, uh, there was some writing on the wall. You have to follow some visits as we go through uh, with Josh Newberg, as he likes to say. Um, this is a a huge get for Florida and just in terms of perception. They've done a really nice job in this recruiting class. Now, will it translate to wins on the field in 2023? We'll kind of have to see how that goes. But just overall, I think Florida got a really good get, um, unfortunately. But, you know, as it is now, Florida State has four wide receiver commits. Um, Ron Dugans is still trying to get other talented prospects in this class. You talked about JoJo Trader, who committed over to Miami, surprisingly, actually, for that. Um, and it's just a situation where I thought Florida State had a little bit more of the inside track there. He commits to Miami, but, you know, with those South Florida kids, anything's possible at that point. So you really have to factor that in. Same thing with Wayne McCoy. Um, with him being committed to Florida State, will he go to you know, UCF, Miami, or will he stay at Florida State? That's another factor you're going to have to go into. And a lot of people were speculating that him and, and Abrams were just, you know, not really a part of this class as much, and they were kind of worried about a lot of different things. But – just overall, though, I, I do like the skill set of Abrams. I, I think this is a uh, unforgettable get, I guess you could say, because he is a very, very talented player. And, of course, you, you kind of uh, have a little bit more disappointment when it comes to kids like that picking Florida. But, like I said, you know, he visits Florida multiple times. You know, he was in the class because, you know, he wanted to fill a spot. He, he felt like he was loved by the coaching staff. And, Unfortunately, he went to Florida, so we'll see how it kind of plays out in his career, and I wish him nothing but the best, except for when Florida State plays him on Saturdays. Um, but just overall, um, you know, it's just a lot to kind of pull in for Florida State fans right now. 
But typically when we have bad news like that, we typically have some pretty good news right after. So you never know how this class is going to be able to end up so far. We've got a lot of commits, uh, hopefully going to be happening in the next couple of weeks. We have some good news that's coming up, timelines that are kind of meeting with some of the guys out there like K.J. Bolden, uh, Julius Solomon, you know, um, Charles Lester as well. There's a, there's a couple of guys out there that you're kind of looking at, and I know Florida State fans are going to, you know, kind of hate on Abrams at this point because he did choose the Florida Gators. But like I said, I wish him nothing but the best. I wish his family nothing but the best as well. And I know Ron Dugan is going to have a backup plan in terms of this uh, perception that Florida State has so far in the wide receiver room. And uh, I know Florida State's going to do a nice job in being able to get all those talented playmakers around Luke Cromenhawk, who is a talented quarterback, quarterback of the future at that point, 247 sports on three. A lot of those sites that have uh, those recruiting rankings are very, very high on him. And I know this offense is going to be very special around him. They're just putting as many playmakers as they possibly can around him. And that is absolutely fantastic in terms of the future of Florida State football. But I really appreciate all the love and support so far. Be sure to hit me up in the comments section what you thought about this recruitment so far. Was it what you expected? Um, who do you think Florida State is going to go after in the wide receiver room? If they're even going to go after anybody at that point, uh, will a Jeremiah Smith be involved in this recruitment? Who knows? You know, this is just uh, kind of a speculation thing for right now for Florida State. I think they're kind of evaluating a lot of targets they have so far. But I think this is going to be a really good uh, evaluation period for Florida State. As we kind of look at who they value the most at those positions. But I really appreciate, as always, let's go ahead and try to get this video up to 70 likes today if we can. And I really appreciate all the love and support. And as always, go Nopes.